Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Uh, welcome to Agile Underground. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about how I started to introduce Agile methodologies in non-Agile corporate environments. So let's have a quick look at the agenda. So first of all, I would like to give you a short introduction about myself, the company I work for, the reason behind I started this Agile transformation. Um, also, I would like to give you um, some advice on where to start, actually. And we will have a short look on challenges before we wrap up everything. All right. So that's me. I'm Benny, and I work in IT. I'm an IT project manager. Um, and I consider myself as a digital native, which really helps when you work in IT, because you bring along this passion about questions and especially answers and uh, solutions to problems. Um, I also like simple things, uh, and, and I'm a big fan of quality. And just for reference, I do own um, a project manage a professional pr a PMP certification, as well as a professional scrum master and an ITIL foundation certification. So the company. The company is the Boston Consulting Group, um, and it's one of the, the leading management consulting firms uh, in the world. It got uh, founded in 1963 out of Boston. And we currently have 90 offices in over 50 countries. That means we are really diverse, um, and we are still growing. So currently, we, we do have around 18,000 employees still growing. Um, and what we do is basically client case work all around the world. And my job is to help the knowledge department bring back the knowledge from case teams, sanitize it, and provide it back to other consultants so that the organization can grow and learn. So, big question, why did I start this Agile Underground journey? And the answer is fairly easy. I got frustrated. And I experienced frustrations all over in my team as well. So we had slow progress, for example. And that was a bad feeling, because um, we had fortnightly calls, uh, like a jour fix calls, um, in which we talked about all the things that went good. Um, and you know we tried to uh, surface the progress. And of course, if you do that uh, every two weeks, it really slows you down. So that was frustrating for myself as well as my team members. We also suffered from late delivery. Um, but the point is, if you, you know, if you commit to a release date two and a half years in advance, the likelihood is very high that you miss that goal. Um, we also experienced sometimes that you went over budget with your project. Um, and we experienced inflexible vendors. And my favorite example is that one vendor where we asked to change uh, the font size of a portal, and that vendor basically came back and said, well, sure, we can make the change, um, but it will take six to eight weeks, and it will cost $2,000 a year. And that was, you know, I said, that's enough. So we got rid of the vendor, by the way. So what needs to happen first? And basically, um, it is building trust, because you really have to understand your customer because it's a journey where you do not know if it's going to work or not. So you need the trust. And basically, you get the trust by understanding who your customer actually is, what the service or product is, and who the target audience is. And then I started with some simple baby steps. I, I said to the team, well, does it make sense to meet every two weeks for the shoe fix? I basically asked the question a couple of times, and then I introduced the daily standard where I asked them, OK, let's meet daily instead, and let's see how that works. And then the team basically said, well, it's a good idea. Let's give it a try. And by doing this, every day, meet for 10 to 15 meet, uh, minutes, or 12 sometimes, um, you really keep your uh, meetings short, and you focus on the most uh, important things. And that got really well received. And I, I surfaced that in the so-called retro, where we basically sat down together every, I would say, four to six weeks for a couple of hours, and we discussed what went good, what went not so good, and where do we actually see room for improvement. And the beauty about retro sessions is that you stick an action item to each topic you talk about. And then in the next retro session, you actually 
um, see the result from your things you discovered in the first retro. And again, this puts you in the mode where you constantly um, try out new things and learn about it, where you basically say, well, that didn't work out good, but those other topics, we want to keep them. And you can change it constantly. And then I introduced the user story, and that was a big breakthrough because the requirements analysis, requirements management was a big problem um, because you get shot with um, requirements left, right, and center by email, by personal calls, or you know whatever. And I basically said, well, let's let's keep focused. So the user story is a very powerful tool to you know capture what you want to do in a product or service. And it's fairly easy because it's as a user, for example, or as a role, I want to do something, something, so that I can, in the brackets, generate business value. And that's very key because with the business value attached to each and every story, it, it's very transparent why are you doing these things and why are you need those things. And then we put those user stories in one single place, in one repository. Hello. <laughs> um, we put them in one repository, the backlog. And the backlog also is a very powerful tool because it really helps you to keep focused on what is the most important thing um, on your journey and your vision. And it can be as easy as an Excel spreadsheet where you put in all your requirements and um, you shift them across once you change priorities. And all of this helps you to shorten your planning horizon to a minimum of, let's say, a couple of weeks. And I came from, you know, the background where you, uh, where you start to, um, you kick off a project and you plan to do a release in two, two and a half years. So it really, it, you, you will miss <clears throat> um, uh, the release date if you plan that much time ahead. So again, short planning cycles, also known as uh, sprints in Scrum, um, that really keeps you, um, or it, it really helps you to focus. And overall, I consider that journey, um, or in other words, I, I, for, my, for myself, I would like to have a so-called hypothesis-driven design as the objective of this agile transformation, where you help your customer to come up with hypotheses before you actually start doing any work. Because an hypothesis can actually be verified or falsified very quickly with an MVP or a short little test. Um, and then you know that your audience, your target audience, is really you know, wanting that you know, functionality or feature. And now let's talk a little bit about challenges. Because some might say, well, Agile transformation is very nice, but in my organization it won't work because the culture is simply not allowing it. And maybe you're right, but culture is the thing that you can change. Culture is the thing, it's a living thing in, in your people's minds. And if you are the first person basically trying to, um, to approach a new uh, thing, then yes, you are the first one, you might fail, but maybe you will influence other people's by actually um, telling them that, you know, that might work, let's ask again for it. And this is how you change culture. And in our case, that really worked well because I got contacted by our COO who actually, you know, wanted to talk about Agile with me. And I was like, okay, fair enough, let's give him an hour. And then we talked about it. And th that was two, two and a half years ago. And since then, um, we are trying to, you know, get more Agile in, in, in this whole IT organization all around the globe. The next thing is the missing vision. If your product or service does not have a vision, it's frustrating sometimes because you don't know in which direction you should go. And my advice is, if there is no vision, come up with your own vision. It's as easy as that. Because then you know that's the direction I want to go, and that helps not only yourself, but also the members in your team. And the last thing is interpretation, because sometimes people tend to have a different understanding by the same terminology. And also, there is a tool called the glossary, which really helps you to write down the terminology actually needed and you know, agreed for all the team. 
And a good example is, for example, the, um, the definition of done, because it really makes a difference if a feature is coded and checked into source control, or if it's actually rolled out to production and tested with proper data that your users are using it. So I've got one minute, 48 seconds left. So basically, let's wrap up. So, first advice, know your customer. Know what is their product and service and know who's their target audience. It really helps you to gain trust. Start small, start with small experiments. As I said, the daily stand-up is a perfect um, thing to do. Just meet every day, and try it out if that helps you or not. Um, and again, this will influence your peers because maybe not only your customer but also your colleagues will um, you know, contact you and maybe you can coach them. I got also contacted by an assistant who wanted to know more about Agile and we did a couple of um, coaching sessions and that will have an influence on the partner who's actually um, leading this whole Agile transformation program. And of course, the last thing is take action because your ideas in your head are just ideas. So you have to get them on the ground to actually make a difference in this world. And basically that's it. That's my Agile Underground presentation. And um, I think we now have 12 minutes for your questions.